Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Trevor Fennell, and I am secretary of the uh, SEMA organization, Specialist Access Engineering and Maintenance Association. And today I'm doing a presentation which is titled The Only Way is Down. SEMA's aim for the numbers of uh, recorded accidents and incidents in the suspended access industry is exactly the same as the aims of the AIF. We're looking for the holy grail of no accidents, no incidents. Quite a target, we know, but we think we can do things to uh, even better what we think is a quite good safety record that our membership has. The environment that SEMA works in is very much like most of the members of AIF, their member companies. We design, manufacture, install specialist equipment on sites and then we leave it there for operatives to use and there is no presence um, of SEMA on a daily basis. So when we're talking about accidents and accident figures, we can only be as accurate as the feedback we get from our customers, clients, or whatever, when they're using it. If they're having problems, if they have accidents, we do rely on them to feed back to us. So we are trying, along with the AIF, eventually to develop a situation where there is some commonality of reporting of incidents and accidents on equipment that's provided by SEMA member, uh, by AIF members. Some of the machinery that our members provide is quite complex and it has to be operated in a correct and proper manner. We are fully aware of the fact that this is a requirement and training is needed on specific equipment, specific sites and we are eventually um, we've been talking about it in the uh, booth opposite. SEMA is developing training courses, etc., which I'll come to later on. There's some interesting numbers. Um, I've tried to trace back some recorded accidents and incidents when our members' equipment is being used. And in 2009-2010 period, we had 28 members. And when I average out, they each had 26 employees. Now that's from office staff, site staff, designers, etc. And you'll see that when we had collated our information, we had one major fall, which was from more than two meters, manual handling incidents, and one damaged hand, which was uh, an, a fitter not controlling the spanner. It slipped off the, uh, the thing he was tightening up and he damaged his hand. But these are the total recorded accidents we have. Some of them are from actually the site users who recorded the accident, particularly the one where the guy fell more than two meters. He wasn't a SEMA member, he was actually a client. In 2010-11, we had 26 members and each employed an average of 29 staff. We had one major incident contacting, uh, contact with um, moving machinery. One recorded accident, again for manual handling and lifting, and one tripped and fell at the same level. Again, these are incidents that are reported by our clients there could be many, many others, and uh, the AIF is going to put some effort and substance into trying to make sure that in future, when people report to any AIF company accidents that they have had on their sites, they will be done in a tailored manner so that we can get good, precise information. That information is needed because that's the type of information a designer needs to be able to design and develop his design to achieve a more safe piece of equipment and a more safe operating system and uh, risk, lower the risks involved on, on site. So although the, I think, uh, and I'm sure my SEMA members agree with me, these are quite small numbers when you consider the industry that we work in. 
but we still believe if we can get the relevant information, if we can work together, then we can even improve on those numbers. The steps that we're going to take to try and in, improve the, the only ways down program that we've set ourselves, we have developed um, a duty holder course uh, or program, which was mentioned by Bill uh, over, uh, over the, the way there. And this is to involve duty holders so that they understand that by law what they are expected to provide. And this we feel will start at least to start to tell us how many incidents are being involved. If we find there are common problems, then our the various designers in the various SEMA companies can redesign things, rethink things uh, about overcoming um, common accidents. We're also going to work to train and instruct prospective uh, operators on the facade access equipment. Um, Barry Murphy, the um, chairman of the association, did a presentation where he did point out that uh, they've done training, his company have done training, and Bill actually witnessed this, where a guy turns up on a pair of crutches. Now, how the devil can he be taught how to use a cradle? Another one turns up, doesn't speak English, and a third one turns up, he didn't know what he was letting himself in for, his employer had sent him to go on a course. There's obviously some work to be done there on uh, making sure duty holders understand the training that people working in the, on their buildings should undertake. And we believe with the combination of the duty holder training and the operative training, we will start to improve this uh, these accident statistics. We've also taken steps to work with the Construction Skills Organization to develop a course that SEMA members themselves can send their engineers, installation engineers, maintenance engineers and management on so that we're again working from a common base for the skill level for these maintenance and installation engineers and this will help to give comfort to the duty holder once again who can say well thanks very much you maintain my equipment how do I know it's been done properly SEMA members can turn around and say because independently our operators have been trained to a recognized program and with a little bit of way to go on that construction skills uh, program but it's about 95 percent there and we hope in the next couple of months that we will be topped tailed and our own members can start sending our own operatives onto that course. What we at SEMA members want to avoid, and as you'll see, these photographs come courtesy of the Corporation of London. They did a, a presentation about five years ago now, which included some of these photographs. So um, we thought we'd include these. Photograph one. Uh, what's wrong? Well, you've got engineers working on a roof They haven't any personal protection equipment. Even from this range, you can see they don't have safety helmets, they don't have safety harnesses. If we could look over the parapet, we'd probably find out they were doing it in a pair of trainers, not safety boots, and certainly they probably haven't got gloves on there when, when they're working on uh, the, the, <coughs> the equipment, so there is a risk to hands. Now, there's no prizes on the second photograph to say, you know, what's wrong here? There is no way a temporary cradle should be rigged in this manner. A man has got the protection of a parapet and yet he's chose to ignore that, climb over and stand on a, a ledge about 350 wide to pull up the wire ropes that he's going to attach to the jibs for the temporary cradle. We want to make sure that this type of rigging just isn't seen again. Proper training should help us to do that and the duty holder understanding that he is responsible so he makes sure that the riggers who are going to go on his site are trained and respect the training that they've had. Again, access and egress to a temporary platform, that should never, you should never ever be able to see a man climbing over a parapet and then stepping onto a cradle which is swinging in free air. Proper training, respective training, 
and a duty holder who understands that whilst this is going on in his building, he has a responsibility to make sure the people he's employed to do the job respect and work within the training course that they've had. Again, you, you sharp-eyed ones will notice this is on the same building and he's leaning out there and he's got a safety system of some kind. He's got a friend of his holding onto his ankles. We should never see this type of work being done. And hopefully with the proper training to the relevant people, this will become a thing of the past. Here we have a cradle, a permanently installed cradle, and the operative is leaning out way past his center of balance over the handrail to carry out some maybe cleaning or, or some uh, facade maintenance. Why the devil he didn't get his friend just to press the down button and carry on the work in front of him in the proper work position well only he can tell you why that happens but again training and understanding the responsibility that will eventually lead to proper respect and use of the equipment that SEMA members provide and finally we have a photograph where a knowledgeable client has gone along, he's provided a safe machine, and you've got two men in with the proper PI equi PPI equipment, and they're carrying out their duties from a safe place of work. And that is what SEMA wants to ensure. Thank you very much for your time.